Hey everyone, we wanted to jump on here and start documenting our TTC journey. It's been a long road for us from yeah. where we've started to here and we're looking forward to the future, hopefully the near future of when we can look back and say everything was well worth it because we have our happy, healthy little baby. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, when we first started this journey, we would get on YouTube and Google and everything. And a lot of times you get the female perspective, but you mm -hmm. don't really get the male perspective yeah. or, you know, the couple's perspective. And I think that's something we can maybe, you know, implement. incorporate and implement. Yeah. Because I think it'll help not only us, but also other people with questions about. Yeah. Uh, so they can see both sides of it rather than just. Yeah. And the just the female side. side. Yeah. And, uh, you know, during this journey, we've also kind of learned that half the time it is the male mm -hmm. that has the, has the fertility issues. So definitely I think we'll be able to bring something to the table. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so a little bit about our backstory. We've been married for a, a little more than five years now. We started trying to get pregnant basically as soon as we got married. Or yeah, we, we weren't trying to prevent it. Yeah, we weren't trying to prevent it. So uh, she stopped taking birth control and everything. And mm -hmm. we just kind of said, you know, we'll get pregnant naturally. And when it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. We weren't really doing anything to, you know, expedite the process, yeah. like uh, ovulation test or anything. Mm -hmm. But we were just kind of saying, you know, it'll happen soon. Yeah. Uh, fast forward about three and a half years, though, and we still hadn't gotten pregnant on yeah. our own. So we started to Google and look into other options and seeing how we might be able to get pregnant faster. So we started uh, trying like pre-seed. I started taking an OPK test to track my ovulation. Um, we got on Google and literally just Googled how to get pregnant quickly. Yeah. And tried some... Home, home remedy. remedy type things. Yeah, we literally tried everything we could find like online. Like grapefruit juice. Yeah, I tried that because I seen something that said if you drink a glass of grapefruit juice a day, it's supposed to help you uh, become more fertile. Uh, I'm not a fan of grapefruits or grapefruit juice. It's yeah. really, really <laughs> disgusting and it didn't work, but it was worth the try, I guess, even though it didn't work for us. Yeah. Um, and but. really, we tried that, you know, for a while and then... Uh, back in January, we decided, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it's time we uh, try to call somebody, you know, maybe get, go to the doctor yeah. and see what's going on because we might have we some still, issues. We still, yeah, weren't having any luck. So yeah. fast forward to the beginning of this year, I had my first appointment with the doctor, my OBGYN. Yeah. When we went in, we were kind of expecting more of like a consultation to see, you know, just more or less talk to her and see what was going on. But when we got there and she found out that we had been trying for more than a year, she recommended that I go ahead and get um, blood tests done that day to check my hormone levels. Mm -hmm. And um, she also done like my annual pap that day. Yep. And uh, when we went in for that, um, that was back in January. So mm -hmm. the world was a lot different. And, uh, you know, we got in really quick. Like we called like, you know, one day and then like a, within a week we were yeah. already in the office. So, um, Anyway, she had her blood work done and her pap. Mm -hmm. Her pap came back completely normal. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, with her blood work, she did have one hormone that was a little high. Yeah, it was uh, my prolactin level. Yeah. She said it was just barely higher than she wanted it to be. So she had me fast and then come back in again for a second blood test because she said it could have just been where I ate um, before coming to that appointment. It might have just made a spike. So yeah. about a week later, I did that and I went back in. And those results came back, and she said the level was still just barely too high for her. She wanted them to come down even a little bit more, and she wanted to see exactly what was making the level high. Yeah. So she recommended that I get an MRI of my pituitary gland because that is what makes your prolactin level, I guess, increase. So we started Googling, you know, uh, prolactin levels in your pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. The first thing that comes up is... Uh, as tumors on your pituitary gland. Yeah, some scary, scary stuff. Yeah, it's really scary. I mean, most of the time they say the tumor is benign, but I mean, any tum anytime you see the word tumor, it's instantly like, you know, Obviously scares you to death. Obviously freak you out, yeah. So we were both very nervous. For yeah, that. for it, like from the time that I had to schedule that up until yeah. it took like two to three days after the MRI to even get my results. So we were really on edge until then. But, yeah, and this um, was in mid-March, so mm -hmm. this, this uh, appointment was the first appointment that was really, really affected by the coronavirus because it had just mm -hmm. gotten really, really big and things were starting to change, like As, the world was starting to change. Yes, that was starting to shut down. It was hard to get into doctor's appointments, that yeah. kind of thing. So that was delayed even more. So we were freaked out for quite a bit, which is waiting on that yeah. appointment. Um, but luckily, everything came back normal, thank God. 
Um, so then our next step was for me to go back into to see the OBGYN. Yep. And she wanted to do an ultrasound of like my ovaries and just everything down there to make every or make sure everything was okay. And again, we got delayed for that appointment, but it was, it was like a month. Yeah, it was April. It was toward yeah. the end of April. Um, so we went in for that. And again, she said everything looked normal. Everything checked out. Um, and then she kind of sat down after that with both of us and said that from her perspective, um, everything looked good. She had done as much testing as she could do, and she recommended that we be referred to a fertility specialist. Yeah. And again, with the coronavirus, uh, not to harp on it over and over, but fertility <laughs> specialists in where we're at in Kentucky were mm -hmm. not considered, considered an essential business. So they were actually closed at the time. When we called, as soon as we got that doctor's mm -hmm. appointment, we got the secretary, and she told us just to wait until about June to call back. Which yeah, that was, was her two personal, I think, cell phone number that I yeah. had been like transferred to. Mm -hmm. And she said uh, she gave me the date in June that theirs was open back up. So, yeah. like on that day in June, like the very morning of, I called like right away, mm -hmm. and somehow they're already booked up through July. Into, yeah, into mid July. Yeah, so we had to wait even longer for that, but um, we did have that appointment. Finally, it seemed like it lasted like forever waiting yeah, for that. Yeah, it is. I mean, and we were already kind of discouraged because we waited so long from the time we got married and really wanted to have a baby, mm -hmm. and now for this to be delayed even more and more, we were just just very, very discouraged. Yeah, but so when that appointment finally came, we were both like super anxious, nervous, mm -hmm. Didn't excited. know what to expect. Yeah. We had Googled and looked, but I mean, mm -hmm. you get so many different perspectives yeah. and everything, it's just nobody's journey is the same. So from our experience, anyway, the first appointment with the fertility specialist, um, I, we were both kind of expecting we would go in and have like another routine, yeah. like regular doctor visit or, you know, you go sit on the little uh, table, the doctor comes in, checks everything. Mm -hmm. But it was more of like a one-on-one -on -one personal experience, yeah. like situation where, where at first the nurse came in and she talked to us for about a good 20, 30 minutes asking about like our medical history. They asked about the testing that she mm -hmm. had done previously. If he they, had any testing done yet, which he hadn't. hadn't. Yeah. Um, so that was basically what we did first. And then the doctor came in after that. Um, he was in there for what? They like 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes or yeah. so. And he <laughs> threw insane. so much information at us at mm -hmm. one time. It was, it was really overwhelming. It was. <laughs> Luckily it was he did give us like a packet of papers mm -hmm. and had them numbered one, two, and three as kind of our mm -hmm. objectives and steps moving forward. Yeah. So we have three, I guess, guidelines that we'll be using going forward. And our first one, which is the one we're on right now, mm -hmm. was that he wanted me to have an HSG test. He wants wanted him to schedule all his, analysis. Yeah, and yep. his testing. And then he also prescribed me a thyroid medicine because he said he had reviewed the blood test results from when I'd seen the OBGYN. Yep. And my levels were just a little high for him. He said, had we not been trying to get pregnant, nothing ab like abnormal from that. But since we were, it was a yep. little high. So he prescribed that for me. Yep. Um, so... I started taking that basically right away, mm -hmm. and then I went in for my HSG test, and that had to happen. Like we had to wait to schedule that from the day that I, from the first day I started my period, I had to call the doctor's office and yep. schedule it that day between day five and day fourteen. Yeah, is when you have to have that test done. So you have like a little tiny time frame in order to have that. I know we were both freaked out because it already been. So delayed with everything else. Yeah, we I just, was terrified. We were assuming that we were going to be delayed that. and they had to wait a few cycles. Yeah, but we got lucky. I was I got, mm -hmm. I was able to get in this month and on cycle day six. So really pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I was pretty freaked out about that too. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, because I mean, again, you Google things and yeah. we were seeing things from you couldn't walk the next day yeah. to people were passing out crazy, because the pain was so stories. intense. But luckily for her... Her test didn't go quite as bad. Yeah, as it really wasn't people. as bad as some of the things you get online and read. Like, you do feel a little bit of pain, like a little bit of pinch when he initially kind of starts it. But um, literally, it lasts like a second. It wasn't that bad from, from my experience anyway. Yeah. So, that and was good. Another thing, we've kind of been lucky where we're at, which we're in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people we've seen in different YouTube videos and everything, uh, the husband's not been able to go back with the wife and vice versa during mm -hmm. these procedures. But so far, for the most part, we've been pretty lucky that yeah. I've been able to go to all the appointments and she's been able to go to all the appointments and together yeah. and we haven't had to be uh, going separate. So that's a good thing. Yeah, it's been really, really nice having each other to kind of rely on. And like, if we have questions after, be like, 
what did that person say? Because Yeah, because, I mean, they throw so much information <laughs> at you right at one time. It's nice to have two people in there, so maybe yeah. I'll catch something and she'll catch something. Yeah. And another thing about fertility specialists, um, at least in our experience, and it seems to be the way with most people, is they don't accept a lot of insurances. They don't accept ours. So all of our costs for the fertility specialist portion mm -hmm. is out of pocket. Yeah. So that, you know, it's unfortunate, but I mean, yeah. we're ready to, you're willing to do anything we can to yeah. have a baby. Um, so as far as like our, or my HSG test, mm -hmm. luckily for that, everything he said came back normal for that as well. Um, I was really, really relieved too, that I got to learn like the results, like there. Yeah, the on the spot, yeah. I was, I was worried. Like, we didn't have to wait. Like yeah. it was instant. He, he told her the results yeah. a minute after she had the test. Done. Yeah. So that was really, really nice. Something I didn't know going in. Um, so now what our plan going forward looks like is. His testing is coming up. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I wasn't as, as fortunate as she was to get my test right yeah. away. Um, they were already booked up because of how it being closed with the coronavirus. So we were already looking at mid-September yeah. for my appointment for my semen analysis. But luckily today, mm -hmm. yeah, I actually got a call Yeah, from the secretary. And she said that we, they were going to start doing some Saturday appointments mm -hmm. in August and to see if we were available to come mm -hmm. on August 15th. Which we definitely jumped all over yeah. because we were, you know, super anxious to yeah, get this done. So, as of right now, which today is July 31st, yeah. our appointment for the semen analysis is August 15th. Mm -hmm. And some more good news from her HSG test is, along with the uh, uh, prescription for her thyroid, mm -hmm. those two things together, he said half of his patients get pregnant yeah. within three mm -hmm. months mm -hmm. just from those two things. Yeah. So. We're really, you know, hoping hopeful. that, yeah. hopeful that that, 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 that does it. So, kind of our guide, or yeah, our guideline going forward is, hopefully, he wants us to try for three to four months to get pregnant yep. naturally and on our own. Granted, that, is, that, granted yeah. that my semen analysis comes back normal. normal. If my semen analysis comes back at a at a low count or mm -hmm. a low motility rate, then yeah. then basic, we go to guideline number two, yeah. which is IUI. Yep. Yeah, and, and he said three to four cycles of that, so that's another three to four months of mm -hmm. doing that. Um, if that proves unsuccessful, then we move on to IVF. IVF. Yeah. And, of course, IVF is the most expensive, so they always, you know, try to do that one last. Yeah. But that's kind of what we're looking at going forward, and yeah. we're looking forward <laughs> to documenting everything in yeah. the coming months and Helping other people out there kind of in our yeah. shoes. I mean, you know, a lot of people go through fertility issues. And I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people were, you know, us included, really. I mean, mm -hmm. we really just started opening up about it to, mm -hmm. you know, our family, our, family, our friends. Yeah. I mean, people like just Like, our had no very idea. best friends probably knew about it. But even, like, I feel like we still weren't super, super open yeah. for, we just kept it really quiet. Yeah, our parents like, had no idea. I mean, it was mm -hmm. just really something we just didn't talk about. I, it wasn't really we were embarrassed. It was just something just kind of... Mm -hmm. Just didn't feel comfortable talking about it. Now yeah, we've opened yeah. up, it really has helped, and we hope that we can help other people open up with their journey. Yeah. So we're looking forward to documenting and sharing, sharing it all with you guys. So if you would like to kind of follow along, see what happens in our journey, or if you have any questions, we would love to be able to help. Yeah, Thanks definitely. So subscribe if you want to see more. Yeah. And also, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. We'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you soon.